Okay. Preparing for the jump to light speed. <laughs> Question 15. Why are you preparing? You're always preparing. Just go. <laughs> this is Libby Road and the Sound Epistemology Podcast. Welcome back to the podcast and to the Street Epistemology Survey Series and another example of how easy it is to misunderstand our conversation partner. It's important to remember that this is not the typical SE conversation of exploring one's person's reasons for assigning a certain level of confidence that a conclusion they hold is likely true. Rather, this survey series is designed to explore both parties' relationship with ideas surrounding truth. What we've noticed while watching and editing this particular episode, as well as other episodes, is that we discover that we are operating from different goals for the conversation. It may also be worth mentioning that while editing this episode, we realized that it would be helpful to amend number 15 for clarity by adding the word sincerely before the word accept. Our definitions of accepting something and something being true proved to be a literal fixed target for David and a more figurative temporary target for Rupert. It's interesting to observe that we each understood the statement differently. Because of the rapport we have between us, we are interested in each other's point of view, but it's fair to say that our attachment to our own point of view and our own particular understanding of the statement are what we can witness driving each of us in this conversation. We see David attempting to clarify his understanding by repeating, is true, is true, which Rupert clearly wasn't able to hear at the time. And we see Rupert attempting to clarify his understanding by declaring that he didn't see on the survey where it said the point was for our beliefs to match reality. We then go on to explore what we understand our goals to be. Here is number 15. Question 15. It is okay to accept something is true because it is comforting. Hmm. Another. You said neutral. I said strongly disagree. Yeah. That's not the first time that's happened. Mm -hmm. It's this okay to accept something is true because it's comforting. It's true. It's true. Mm -hmm. It's okay to think that something is true because it's comforting. So this, and I think neutral is a pretty interesting concept because... Again, my definition of neutral is I'm right in the middle at 50 and there's a 51 and a 49 available such that I think it could tip one way or the other. You could be on one side of neutral and still be neutral. No, I could tip towards disagree. I could tip towards uh, agree. Okay. Um, again, though, as you pointed out, from a pragmatic point of view because I think comfort is a is a is a good thing is a nice thing sure and so again it comes back to this would you rather be happy or would you rather be right and I'm neutral because I can see the value in someone wanting to be happy instead of wanting to be right I see a lot of value in it but it's, I've, I do see where it's helpful, really helpful sometimes, um, to the point of being okay. But it's, I'm not saying I agree. And I'm also not saying I disagree. I think there's going to be times when I agree and when I don't agree. Which implies a lot more flexibility in my point of view than your own. So talk to me about being strongly disagreeing with this. Mm -hmm. You think it does harm for someone to believe in the Tooth Fairy, for example? I strongly disagree because if the goal is to believe true things, because mm. this is kind of what this whole exercise is about, it's based on, you know, if we want to believe true things, what's more reliable, what's not reliable? Uh, 
feeling comfortable about something has no effect on whether it's true. So can I come back to a point you made? Mm -hmm. If the goal is to accept true things. It's, if your goal is for your beliefs to align with reality. I don't remember that being the opening uh, page on the survey. Yeah, what so. is truth? Yeah. So um, my goal, I'll, maybe I should put it that way. Okay. My goal with this exercise is to explore what truth is. Uh, okay. and, and my goal in this arena is to believe as many true and as few false things as possible mm -hmm. and have reliable ways to tell the difference. Yeah, comfort, comfort for me is not a reliable way to tell the difference between what's true and what's false. And this, it gets, it's really difficult sometimes when having conversations with people that rely on comfort to tell them if something's true because, for example, there are times when people talk about <clears throat> something that's very emotionally personal to them. Um, say like the death of a loved one. And it brings them comfort to think that they're going to see them again someday. And I, I understand how that could be comfortable, how that could bring comfort. However, that being true or not has nothing to do with whether it's comfortable or not. Um, if, if thinking that I can see my grandmother again someday brings me comfort, that has no effect on whether I will or not. So that's why I disagree strongly that it is okay to accept something is true because it is comforting. Yeah, I think I've finally had the aha moment as to why our questions and why our answers come out so differently. Because my goal is to have better communication better conversations, better quality conversations mm -hmm. in which there's both good listening and good talking happening mm -hmm. on both sides of the fence. Mm -hmm. And so when I read, is it okay to accept something's true because it's comforting, it's through that lens. And so... You think you can have a better conversation with somebody if you accept something to be true because it brings you comfort? Not uh, to the point of me being neutral. Let's not forget. I don't agree with this. Okay. But I also okay. don't disagree yeah. with this. You okay. strongly disagree with this. Mm -hmm. I'm neutral. I think it is okay sometimes for someone to accept something is true because it's comforting. And then I think it is not okay to accept something is true because it's comforting. How do you decide... Times. How do you decide when it's okay and when, when it's not okay? Well, if you want to go back to the example you're talking about, about someone believing they'll see their, their deceased loved one, I think it's okay if they are in the throes of mourning, mm -hmm. grieving this person's loss because it happened recently. I think it's okay to accept that they bring comfort from that. Mm -hmm. I think when they have moved through the stages of grief to a place of acceptance and being able to objectively talk about with laughter, with sadness, with s not neutrality, but some comfort rather than just unraveling because mm -hmm. the pain is too close to them, the, the, plain is, the, the pain is too recent then I think it becomes no longer okay. Then I think there's room to have the conversation deeper. But I think, I think for that could be detrimental if you don't have the, the subtlety to be nuanced there mm -hmm. and go, you know what, 
That's okay. Yeah. Now's not the time to talk about this. Yeah, I I I share that sentiment. It's o it's okay. It's okay if somebody that I'm talking to is deriving comfort from something that isn't true. I think it's okay. I think that's okay, especially like you said if they're in mourning. I don't think that it's okay for me to accept that that's true because it brings me comfort or somebody else comfort. Yeah, and I can see why you'd say that. Um, and I, I definitely accept that. Um, and I suppose it would be an interesting conversation to have with you. You know, I mean, not that you have a belief in that way, but it would it, it, close to an it, close to an event like that. Mm -hmm. You think I would that. see it differently? It might be. You think I would you, move down to neutral? It could be if if seeing a butterfly reminded me of somebody that had passed on. I'm open to that.